Welcome to the Cybertruck Unveil. We created an exoskeleton. <laughs> nice. Now I have the Cybertruck. Yeah. What else can we do with this truck? Let's shoot it. That's a nine millimeter bullet shot at the door. So it's, it's, it's ultra hard, cold rolled, uh, stainless steel alloy that we've developed. We're going to be using the same alloy in, in the Starship rocket and in the Cybertruck. Let's, uh, let's, let's show the glass demo. So first, first, this is regular glass. This is like normal glass, car glass. We want to show you what happens with normal car glass. Now I'll show you Tesla armor glass. Yeah. Yeah, so it's still, still there. there you go. Uh, Franz, could you try to break this glass, please? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Yeah. <laughs> Should we try on the beer? <laughs> Sorry? Okay. It didn't go through. That's so that's a, that's a plus side. Let's try the right. Okay. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh man. It didn't go through. <laughs> All right. <laughs> eh, not bad. A little room for improvement. <laughs> in addition, the car has an adaptive uh, air suspension. The rear is 100 cubic feet, six and a half foot uh, length. Bed length, uh, up to 3,500 pounds of payload. So let's see, on road the performance. In terms of off road performance, it's going to have the best uh, angular approach angle. Best clearance heights, best departure angle. For people that are really uh, going off-road, this is going to be great. You can basically do the Baja Rally in this thing. We have three ranges. So obviously, they'll have access to all the superchargers, uh, be capable of uh, more than 250 kilowatts. We'll reveal the actual number later. Uh, and uh, it has onboard outlets for 110 and, 100 and 220 volts. Um, and as a little plus, because it's got an air suspension, we can tap off the air suspension so you have a, a, a pneumatic source. So you have an, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. You need an onboard air compressor. Of course, it will come with autopilot standard. Yeah. And, but it's going to. So that, that's the price without any incentives. That's just like the price without any incentives. Yeah, so you can order now if you would like. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, wait. We have uh, uh, we made an, uh, We also made an ATV, so. So the adaptive air suspension, you can drop real low, and you go high on the other side. We call this load mode. So you got a load mode, you got a built-in ramp. So you can take an ATV or a dirt bike, whatever you want, and load it on the back. Yes. Oh. Okay. And it's 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 current it's it's currently plugged in and charging. All right. Hey. When I first started the company, 
it was just myself and a few other people. We actually plastered on the wall a statement that said, we're building this car because it does not exist. The challenge and the beauty of a clean sheet is you can do things the right way without worrying about the legacy of the past, but still leverage and learn from what's been done before. intentionally made sure that we're doing things that people don't believe to be possible. All right, guys. Got a full house. So I wanted to start with a discussion around why we're here. Uh, why does Rivian exist? Why, why are all you sitting here today and why are all of you sitting on the screens in Irvine, at the plant, in the UK, um, in San Jose? The reason these vehicles are coming together is because of all the hard work of everybody here. You know, we've all made big sacrifices to be here. We've left other jobs, we're working long hours, we're working weekends, but really the core is why are we here? And the reason we're here is we want to build something better. We want to make the world a better place. What I'm responsible for are the battery algorithms and the battery management system. We call it the BMS. Each module within the pack contains one of these circuit boards. This is a picture of Arches National Park. It's my favorite place. Definitely looking forward to taking a, a, a Rivian vehicle out there at some point soon. I was running in the San Gabriel Mountains above Pasadena, and it was a beautiful night, and I looked over LA and saw smog. And at that moment, it clicked that I needed to help do something about the problem. After a while, I realized that I wasn't doing what I wanted to do to deliver something back to the world and make it a better place. That's what we're doing here. When I look at what car I wanted to buy, I could never find exactly what it is I want. Actually, the car I want is the one that we're building. What really motivates the company, what's really the heartbeat of the company, is the passion to create something that's not in the world today. I'm designing a product that I want one day to drive around and take me to those adventures. It's pretty cool. You have this A-line that carries through and it falls into the headlamp and picks back up in the fascia. It's a uh, pickup truck that uh, performs like a sports car, does well off-road, and has a range of a gas vehicle. How cool is that, right? So basically, this is where all the autonomous driving is going to happen, uh, integrating many different types of sensors between ultrasonic and radar and lidar and camera. It's going to transform mobility in many ways, and that's part of the bigger picture of Rivian. There's a big paradigm that's shifted that electric cars are not fun, that electric cars are not capable. We think that's completely false. But another thing that we learned along the way that was really important was that this gear up process where you like you put your boots on and you get ready to go was so critical to everything you do. So we designed this out of seated height specifically for that reason. I think it's breaking people's expectations of what an electric vehicle can do. It can be rugged, they can go off road. One there and one there. It's four. One motor per wheel. And top of it, we also have like uh, 400 miles plus range. This is mind blowing range. Yeah, it's badass. <laughs> The sensory experience triggers some emotion, so the tactility of the material is very important. And you can experience through like uh, seeing it and then touching it and feeling it. You can see we did some laser etching effect here. I feel like I am in the forest. The entire interface is one infinite plane to the left or right with one visible space in the middle. The applications are here. We can 
can scroll through them. You can expand each application to full screen or down to its native state. The off-road maps that we will deliver will be contour-based maps as well as uh, satellite imagery, etc. So you have a very good idea spatially where you are. It's a really proud moment. It's cool for me to be able to see this come together. We're receiving the first incarnation of the vehicle body made into a skateboard of ours. It's like seeing your baby for the first time. We have been working on this baby for like a long time. It's really good. This is our one chance to come out. First impressions matter. It's gonna be covered in mud. I mean, that's the goal here is to get this thing dirty. I guess the world's gonna know for real. It wasn't just all talk. Monumental, I think, is the word that comes to mind to finally be able to show everyone what we've been working on. Yeah, really cool. To me, we're halfway up the mountain right now. We're not at the top. We don't have time right now to really rejoice over how much progress we've made because if we lose our attention for a second, we can still fall off the side. We still have half a climb left.